Hey, what's up guys? So today I just wanna talk about how I grade my talking head videos just like this one. It's not specific to my videos. Really, this could easily be, you know, how to grade a talking head. I just wanna cover, you know, from beginning to end what I do. Okay, so first off, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how I shoot so you know what kind of footage that I typically am grading with for these talking heads. Um, just for all of you uh, nerds out there that wanna know all the specifics of the camera. So I shoot my videos on the Fujifilm X-T3. I shoot at an H.265 at the 200 megabits per second data rate. I shoot in true 4K DCI, that's 4096 by 2160. Uh, shutter speed 148th, ISO is 800. And I always shoot my videos on the Fujifilm 18 to 55 lens at an f2.8 and i also have a 1 8 black pro mess filter on the lens oh and also obviously i can't forget i also shoot this in f-log so with that being said let's jump into davinci resolve and i'll show you exactly how i grade this footage this intro intentionally left blank hey what's up so here we are i'm just going to show you my workflow for grading a talking head um, before we get started, uh, again, I just want to go over what my settings are. Color science, I set it to DaVinci RGB Color Managed and my color processing mode to the HDR DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. And then because of my um, grading monitor and hardware, I have it set to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. And then the next step I do is I simply bring in my talking head and kind of like I mentioned, this is shot in F-Log on the Fuji lens. So the first step is I simply go here because DaVinci Resolve does not read the metadata of the camera and know that I shot it in F-Log. It does that with a ton of cameras, the RED camera, the Airy camera, obviously the Blackmagic cameras. The Fuji Films is one that it does not do, at least not the X-T3, but all you have to do is right click, come up to input color space, you can see the default setting here is Rec. 709, Rec. 709 scene, but I simply switch that over to Fujifilm F-Log, and then it switches it over to this. And then from here what I'll do is obviously I'll put this in a new timeline and I start grading from there. I'll skip that step because it has nothing to do with color grading, so I'll jump right over to the color page. Okay, so here we are in the color page now. And as I mentioned before in the intro, how I shot this, you can see that the starting place of the clip is, you know, not too bad. Um, you know, nothing is really overexposed, underexposed. It's a pretty nice image to start with. So the first step that I typically do is I just look at the image and I decide, okay, what do I wanna adjust from here? And a lot of times it's based off of simply what the client wants the look someone's going after, or it's just what I might think is best for that look, for that interview or whatever it might be. So for this one, I'm just gonna tweak the exposure a little bit. So I'm just gonna go into HDR and I'm actually going to raise the global exposure and play with that. So I'll just raise that a little, just so we can see something a little bit better. And then from there, I will go in here and I will just make an adjustment on the contrast like that and before after just a small change and then I might just raise the gain a tiny bit before after and really that's it it's just you know I was here it's a little bit too flat for my taste and then I just went here to make it a little bit brighter and then from here so I'm just gonna name this one base grade okay I will add an extra node and then I have my effects I'll go down and I will, let's say, do this here. So this will become almost like a mini dehancer tutorial. Source, I change this to DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate because that's what my uh, timeline is set to. And then a good film stock that I like working with. I actually like working on Fujifilm Terna. I like that look there. And then from here, I typically, because it's just too distracting, I turn off the green completely. And then I see kind of my base look went from here. It's a really quick and easy plugin to just kind of remove these very digital bright red skin, super bright red sweater, and I turn that on. So right now, all we have going on this plugin is that we have the Eterna film stock, and then typically I also will turn on the film compression. You know, the default in this case, 
works pretty well. What I'm seeing that it's doing, you know, for the most part is, it's hard to see on here, but it's kind of bringing down highlights on my forehead and nose here. And also you can see it probably here on the back monitor and this light. Again, you know, you could easily, if you haven't seen my pre previous video on getting cinematic texture, you could also do something like do this high soft here. This is another way you could do it here as well, but it's not as noticeable there really because there's not really anything that's super bright. It's a pretty, you know, it's the lighting on this is pretty balanced, pretty flat. Nothing is super bright um, for you to be able to see that. But if you do have very bright spots, you know, like say a, a bright window, if this window, the blinds were up, this would be a good a tool to use if you don't have the film compression. But for now, I'll just turn that on. And then this is all set turned on as well, but I don't really tweak that usually too much unless my you know lighting is just a little too dark. Uh, but if I do, I typically will adjust just me maybe the black point. Normally for stylistic reasons, like if I want to you know wash out the shadows a little bit, I, I'll maybe raise that. So maybe I will just you know bring up the shadows just a little bit like that. This is all set to the default. I turn all this stuff off. I do have the 1 8 black promist filter already on my lens. So I don't ever really turn on bloom because it just makes things maybe a little too, you know, frosty and bloomy for my taste. So I leave that off. I don't ever, you know, again, it depends on the shot. I don't ever really turn on halation for the most part. Uh, not that it's the wrong thing to do. It's just, you know, on, a, on this one here, I'm not going to turn it on. Um, and then for film grain, I'm not a fan of really heavy grain like this, and obviously it just doesn't make sense with this. So I usually like to go into the custom and I just, you know, my taste, I like turning everything down to, you know, practically the lowest amount possible, something like this, so that you can basically barely see it. Or a new update that I like on this is I like selecting the 65 millimeter ISO 50 specifically because it's just so light. I mean, you can see it a little bit here if I really blow this up, but for the most part, you know, if I hit play, it's there, but it's not that noticeable. You can see it's one of those things, I'm personally like grain to where it's there and you can see it and feel that change, but it's not so like in your face, gritty, you know, slightly cheesy, overly grainy images. So I'll just set it to something like that, or I'll do the custom setting. Um, and then everything else here, the only other thing I might turn on this here, but at the same time, you know, I usually can create my own vignette pretty easily. So that's kind of, you know, you could almost say this is kind of connected to the base look. And the biggest reason that I really use this Dehancer plugin for the most part, you know, the grain and all that other stuff is kind of a nice extra, but what I use it for the most really is the taking it from these very digital looking colors to something a little bit more like that. Right off the bat, it might look like this is kind of like very dead and muddy and desaturated, but you would be surprised when you come back to it later. But this to me just ends up looking much nicer than this super bright digital image. I could get to this, something like this manually from here, but it would just involve a lot of different steps, you know, like keying the red, bringing that down, keying my skin tone, selecting, you know, a lot of different items in the back. But this is just kind of a very kind of quick and easy way to do it. And again, if you want to see those ways, look at my previous video on getting cinematic texture, because again, you could do this with tools like black offset, high curve, desaturation, color temperature, um, mid-tone detail, that sort of thing. Um, but for now, I just do that. And then, you know, this as the base look going from, you know, this is the original image to this, I start kind of shaping it and grading it. So I'll put this at the end. I always leave this here towards the end so it applies this look to the end. And then I go back here, turn that off here. I go back here and I add an additional node. And then I just kind of start painting the image, you could say. So another thing I usually do is I will go here and then just to add a little bit of color contrast, I will draw a box around this window here, shift H, and then I'll soften this a little bit. And then I like just simply going in here and do something like cooling off that window, 
I might, you know, give it a bit of a blue look. Maybe in this case, I'll give it more of a teal look. So we'll just say we'll play with some kind of teal and orange thing. And maybe I'll just do that. It's softened up so that way it won't really, and this is the before and after, before, after. Another note, so you can see things are kind of taking shape a little bit. Okay, and then I'll add this additional serial node and I wanna bring up the saturation overall just a tiny bit. So I will go here and then I'll just, in the HDR tool, I'll bring up the saturation just a tiny bit. And I like how it's being brought up everywhere except the sweater, that sweater's distracting. What I'm going to do now is just kind of go back here, add a parallel node, and then uh, this is such a red sweater, I can probably just key it very easily. So I'll just key that, I'll adjust the key, and then I will blur that key, add a little denoise to it, and then there's picking out some of my face, but rather than kind of messing with it forever to try to fix that, again, I'll just draw this kind of rough window around me because everything's gonna be softened and no one's gonna notice these tiny little things there once this is softened, like that. It's grabbing my, there we go. So that should be enough there. And then I'll just do the same thing, but I'll desaturate my hoodie again. There we go. So I've saturated things here, but I've kept things, you know, I've kept that hoodie desaturated. And let me go back to the base image. You know, again, not a bad looking image, but then as I'm kind of wanting to give it more of a look, we're moving more in this direction, before, after, before, after. And again, you know, we're just kind of keep shaping and painting the image. So now another thing I might do is, and now I'll add another parallel node there, and I'm gonna draw a window. I just kind of want to bring my face out a little bit, so I will, do that, again, soften this up. And I might, I think my face is a little too big on the highlights. Bring it up a little bit. Maybe play with the contrast a little bit before, after, before, after. Well again, here's the original again and after, and I think something that really creates a lot of the color contrast is this window here to the right. Okay, and then I'll go here, and then maybe I'll create my own vignette, which I have kind of this preset vignette that I have, and then I will really kind of darken this here, and I'll just play with, you know, what I like. So before, after, before, after, I think I want this a little bit brighter, so I'll spread this out. Again, before, after, it kind of redirects my attention here towards my face. Before, after, before, after. You know, and this is, by the way, a very basic grade. You know, in real world, I could probably put this grade together very quickly, and it's just a great way to, you know, really get a talking head interview done quickly and looking good. If I play through here, hopefully you'll be able to see, you know, what it looks like. In particular with the grain. And that's about it. You know, no need to overgrade it. No need to, you know, add a million different nodes and do a billion things. You know, I'd say a lot of beginning colorists tend to like overgrade stuff. And again, a lot of it's just kind of like getting used to it because there is that anchor bias with every grade to where the, what you saw initially with a lot of beginners and a lot of beginning filmmakers, especially, they just get used to it, you know? They get used to that first look, that first LUT they applied or whatever, and anything beyond that to them looks way too graded, way too much. You know, and some of you watching this now, you might see this and be like, oh, that original image to me looked better. And as you get used to this, and you go back to the other one, you do start kind of noticing how kind of digital and almost video-like and normal, so to speak, this one kind of looked. It just, you know, in comparison 
looks a little, you know, has less character to it, basically. If you, you know, saw this playing back, this will tend to be a more interesting look than if you just saw this. You know, this basically just looks like a guy in a room talking. But if you turn on all the grades, it just has a little bit more intrigue, something that's a little bit more interesting to look at. So that's kind of how we did it. We kind of did the base grade here. We then turned on the Dehancer plugin. I did these in this order, so that's why I'm not going down the line. And then we kind of, you know, saturated everything, desaturated the sweater brought that up the window so it looks more interesting like that adjusted the face for with a little more contrast and then you know we added a vignette and again overall we go from here to here again very simple grade you can kind of use this initial method for everything it's more about getting the general concepts and ideas of what was done and applying them to your look you know, and then just kind of taking it from there. All right, so that's it. Um, as I wrap up, I just want to say thank you to all my subscribers. This past weekend, I broke over 2000 subscribers. As of this recording, I have 2030. It's not a massive amount, but I still want to say thanks to all of you who are subscribing to my channel. Um, again, like, subscribe, and there's now a new feature that says thanks. So if you want to give thanks, it helps this channel out. It helps me keep making videos. Um, so with that being said, I'll see y'all next time.